Hello everyone, you are listening to Audiobookish, an audiobook discussion and review podcast. My name is Fahed Rahman and this is a special episode, special bonus episode in honour of the British Book Awards. As our regular listeners will be aware, we were one of the partners for the British Book Awards this year in the category of audiobook fiction. The winner of that category was The Wizards of Once. Never and Forever by Cressida Cal, as read by David Tennant. And this episode will just be a compilation of Cressida's acceptance speech from the awards dinner on the 23rd and our review, which was released a couple of weeks ago. I hope you enjoy. And um, yes, let us know if uh, how, how you felt about the, the audiobook as well. Man, oh man, our next presentation is for the Fiction Audiobook of the Year, supported by Audiobookish, a podcast for everyone who loves audiobooks. And here to reveal this award uh, is a TikTok sensation whose joyful content reminds us to find your own tracks and follow your passions full steam ahead. So give him the big tones. It's Francis Bourgeois. <laughs> Hi everyone, I hope you're all having a wonderful evening so far. It's so nice to see so many smiles and uh, real candles as well. Um, my, my experience with uh, audiobooks kind of is, is uh, not really so much audiobooks, but more my dad reading to me at bed. Um, and I used to be on a bunk bed with my brother, and uh, it used to be so, so relaxing and you know, sometimes he'd be reading the story and then he'd, he'd fall asleep whilst reading sort of the words in, in his mind. Um, and we'd go, Dad, Dad, wake up. And then he'd wake up. Um, and I'm going to make sure I, I'd read books to my kids because uh, it was such a memorable experience. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's, see the, um, let's see the nominees. Yeah, let's. Thank you, Francis. The fiction audiobooks contenders are from the Orion Publishing Group, Careless, by Kirsty Cakes, narrated by Amber Gad. From Hodder Children's Books, The Wizards of Once, Never and Forever, by Cressida Cal, narrated by David Tennant. From Audible Originals, The Sandman, Act Two, by Neil Gaiman, Dirk Max, Kate Dennings, Brian Cox, and a full cast. From Penguin Random House Audio, The Night She Disappeared, by Lisa Jewell, narrated by Joanne Froggett. And also from Penguin Random House Audio, The Man Who Died Twice, by Richard Osman, narrated by Leslie Manville. And from Harper Collins, The Lord of the Rings, by J.R.R. Tolkien, narrated by Andy Serkis. We're taking the award here, an audio experience that was pure heart from beginning to end. Francis, who's our winner, please? The winner is... Wizards of Once, Never and Forever. Back on stage, please, Chris and Cow. The latest instalment in this series was the most pre-ordered audiobook ever. Filled with songs and poetry, it was the perfect foil for David Tennant to flourish with unique accents and meta moments. say I am completely astonished I'm not completely prepared to uh, have won this award um, but thank you <laughs> thank you everybody who who voted for Wizards Once Never Forever thank you to my publisher publishers of, of 25 years um, thank you who are here um, and uh, my agent of 25 years Caroline Walsh who is here Thank you to all the booksellers in the room who have, who have passionately sold my books for 20... I've now got to the stage, I've been in the industry for such a long time, that booksellers keep bursting into tears when they meet me because, because the books meant something to them when they were nine years old or eight years old. How lovely is that? Um, I hope it's not for any other reason. Anyway, <clears throat> yes. 
A huge thank you to the utter genius who is David Tennant. <laughs> yes, um, for not only doing the most wonderful job on this book, but on every book since the first How to Train Your Dragon more than two decades ago, 25 years ago. I keep on saying that, which really is quite a long time to stay loyal to an author. And we got him before he, before he did Doctor Who, so it was jolly sweet of him to carry on. Anyway, um, uh, yes, uh, thank you to the production team as well and to my publisher at Chahachet Children's. As children's laureate, I also want to fly the flag here for audiobooks, which make reading joyful and accessible to so many children who won't always sit still with, with a book. Yeah. <laughs> this gives them such a vital role in the quest to get every single child reading for pleasure. And I just feel up against so many adult books, I'm really delighted that a children's book has been... Because if... <laughs> If we don't get the kids reading, you know, we don't have, a, we don't have an industry in the future. Uh, thousands of people throughout the years who told me that David Tennant's audio has been a companion to their summer holiday car journeys. People have actually told me that they've, they've stopped when they've got to the destination to, to see what happened in the end. So, yeah, thank you. And I was so grateful to him, oh, wonderful David, for taking my words on the page and creating magic. Because reading is magic, and magic is for everyone. Thank you. Fiction audiobook of the year, Cressida Cowles' The Wizards of Once, Never and Forever by Hodder Children's Books, and our thanks to audiobookish and Francis Bourgeois. <laughs> okay, so the next book that we're going to talk about is The Wizards of Once, Never and Forever. Do you want to read out the blurb for that, Poppy? I can do. Yep. So, the final book in the Wizards of Once Quartet, the number one best-selling series from the author of How to Train Your Dragon. Warriors and wizards combine forces against the dreadful power of the King Witch, whose searing evil threatens not only the Wildwoods, but all its creatures. Zar and Wish are on the final leg of their journey. First stop, the Mines of Unhappiness. Here, starvation is never far away for the magical creatures who toil in its horrible depths. Zar and Wish must escape, and fast. Zar needs to take control of his ever-growing witch stain, and Wish must achieve her destiny. But the Tatsal Worm is in their way, a grotesque monster who threatens to block every entrance. Time is not on their side, but the forests are calling them. Will their combined strength be enough for the biggest quest so far, to defeat the King Witch once and for all? And I'll read out. Cressida Cowell's bio. Cressida Cowell has sold over 11 million books worldwide in 38 languages. How to Train Your Dragon is also an award-winning billion-dollar DreamWorks film series and a TV series shown on Netflix and CBBC. The Wizard of Once has also been optioned for a film by DreamWorks. Cressida is an ambassador for the National Literary Trust, a trustee for World Book Day and a founder patron of the Children's Media Foundation. She has won numerous prizes for her books, including the Blue Peter Award, the Ruth Rendell Award for Championing Literacy, the Gold Award in Nestle's Book Prize, the Hay Festival Medal for Fiction, and Philosophy Now Magazine's Award for Contributions in the Fight Against Stupidity. That's a great prize to have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cressida grew up in London, and on a small, uninhabited isle off the west coast of Scotland, she now lives in Hammersmith, London, with her husband, three children, and a dog called Pigeon. So I think this was a really odd experience, Mm -hmm. For me, because obviously this is at the end mm -hmm. of a series of books and the audio book starts off with a lot of, as uh, Mark Commode would put it, like Basil exposition to kind of like <laughs> catch you up to date yeah. in terms of what the previous adventures had been. And I really wish that I'd had greater knowledge or had read the previous book in the series because I think there would have been a much greater catharsis listening to this, right, I just I felt you. like I was missing out on something. And mm -hmm. I could tell yeah. that if you were a fan of this series, this would have been like a really good, um, mm -hmm. enjoyable experience. Oh, by the way, the order book is narrated by um, David Tennant as well. So mm -hmm. um, what, what were your kind of initial impressions? 
Yeah, so I, same as you, I wasn't able to find the time to uh, listen to the previous three before going on to this one, so I was going into this fresh, um, but I was therefore quite glad of that recap. And for me, I thought that was quite good. I felt it was quite sufficient. I felt I was able to kind of catch up on what happened. I agree, it probably would have been even better if I'd have, you know, been yeah. really invested in the series, but I, it certainly wasn't a thing of, you know... I didn't think you completely lost if you haven't, you know, I thought that was quite good. I did think as like a, a slight editorially thing, I think a lot of it was like repeated a couple too many times and sometimes even with like exactly the same words. Yes. Um, I personally would have cut those out a little bit or rearranged those a bit better so that, yeah, you didn't feel like you were being told literally the same sentence yeah, again. It was a bit, a bit like an info dump, mm-hmm. that one, but it's kind um, of unnecessary if you've not listened or read the the previous books. Yeah, I think well. I think the infos in, in general at that start, it was good that we had that recap, but yeah, a, a slight uh, criticism on the yeah the overall finish of that i guess but i did find it very helpful i was very uh, glad of that and i think in general it didn't feel like a you know here's a recap that if you had listened to the previous ones you'd be really annoyed about yeah. i don't think i think it did work very seamlessly this is a very much a picky word level yeah. um <laughs> criticism that i would personally I, i'm so bad with repeats and i'm sh- when i'm editing these and listening to how i repeat stuff myself when i'm talking i really don't like it i like to go back and edit and edit and edit and you know i'll when i'm writing things down or like i'm writing emails i hate how much repeated or repeated words just i hate so it's definitely yeah. a bugbear for me but yeah i thought that was helpful um, I also really enjoyed it. Yeah, it sounds like you did as well. I don't know if you've got a particular point you want to start off. I well, okay. So the book has got kind of quite an interesting structure because we start at a certain point, and then she mm-hmm. plays around with the timeline a little mm-hmm. bit as well. So I thought that was kind of for a children's book. Uh, I thought that was a really brave decision. What did you kind of feel about the way that initial few chapters kind of like played out in terms of like? jumping around the timeline with this um, omniscient Mm -hmm. uh, narrator. Yeah, yeah. No, I thought it was pretty good. And I think it can often be the case to kind of underestimate what kids can handle. You know, I I think it suits um, fine for a kid's book to do that kind of thing. Um, It's also something that was in... um, the Kirsty Capes one as well of that um, yes. having the future stuff and flicking back and I mean obviously the night she disappeared as well um but yeah no I thought it was really good I liked how it was you know you leave the characters in a, a moment of peril and then make us wait for ages while you go back and give us some backstory uh which is acknowledged actively in the narration and um yeah I thought it was really good and that thing of acknowledged actively in the narration literally means it's meta which if anyone's listened to our podcast before you know i'm a huge fan of yes Uh, i really love that i loved how that omniscient narrator wasn't an omniscient narrator as in a really detached nothing to do with the story kind of the author's brain or a godlike figure kind of omniscient narrator it was clearly someone who knows everything but they have a personality you know they have an identity which i really like when the stories that have that that rather than a neutral narration you have a narrator and one of the things that i get the impression is something throughout the series is the who is this narrator yeah which this book reveals um and i thought that was really exciting uh and yeah i I really like that i like that as a feature of a book i think with it being kids as well it adds that extra interest you know it's something um exciting yeah different yeah yeah um which i thought was really good so yeah and i really liked in connection with that Kind of going on to another point that I really liked. I like how at the end they acknowledge that David Tennant is the narrator yeah, that, yeah. of this audiobook. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I yeah. loved it. That was yeah. a lovely little moment. Yeah. Um, and there was some stuff throughout where kind of, you know, it's been made as an audiobook. So things like references to um, the listener um, and listening to yeah. this. Um, I mean, I think there was one if you've read the previous book, but that's debatable whether yeah. you want to change that or not. Yeah. But I really liked that there was definitely some care taken over. We want to make that change, you know, which I think is necessary, but I'm still glad when I see it. And yeah, the extra bit with the David Tennantness, I yeah. loved it. So loved I've it, loved it. got a few comments about what happens towards the end of the book. So I wanted to kind of park that to one side. The, um, the, the one thing, so this is a really fun book. Yeah. Uh, I think mm-hmm. the, the, mm-hmm. the one thing that I really liked was the fact that Cressida Cow kind of goes wild 
on mm. the name of like creatures like you know um yeah, things like yeah. you know the, the tazzle worm and all the different giants have got really wild crazy mm. names and i really enjoyed that and you could kind of tell that david Tennant had an absolute ball pronouncing yeah. <laughs> or, um, all those names i think you could really tell that david Tennant was having a really fun time doing yeah. doing this book kind of um the what's the phrase i'm looking for i think familiarity sometimes breeds contempt and we have listened to a previous <laughs> david Tennant book yes. and he's kind of breaking out some of the similar sort of tricks and similar sort of artistic decisions in terms of like the way he gives uh voices to certain characters as well <laughs> but it's when the one trick is kind of like quite that good um yeah. <laughs> it's still, yeah, yeah. how can you complain about it too much but yeah what did you feel about kind of like david's like firstly about the names of the characters and then kind of like david's performance oh yeah yeah no i agree i think they're really fab and won't do spoilers but there's some interesting stuff about names of characters at the end of the book yes uh, yes. which i thought was really cool and yeah wish i knew more about um and that's maybe something where the children listening to this might not know about but maybe it's something where they'll find out about it remember it and go oh wait i've got to go back and listen to that again and see if i can inform it so i think that was really good and then, yeah, David Tennant's performance, I mean, he's a great actor. Uh, we know this. I found it really, really enjoyable. Uh, I liked his different character voices. Uh, I thought they were nice and distinct and, uh, you know, kind of, yeah, matched and worked. There was one that I wasn't sure really um, matched. What was my note here? Oh, yeah. So I wasn't sure that the Bumble Boozle voice really matched the descriptions in the book. Um, okay. Hopefully that's all I've written in my notes. Um, <laughs> so I can't constrictively say it, but I remember listening to the voice and then I think it was like, you know, said Bumble Boozle and a, a description about him. And to me, I was just like, they don't add up. It wouldn't be okay. my choice. But that's literally the only, you know, performance criticism I have really um, as a nitpicky thing. I thought the voices were good. I thought, yeah, the captivating narration. Yeah, I really liked it. I thought it was good. Yeah. And kind of also there's a, some interesting production decisions in this so mm. there are sound effects in this book so that there are drum beats and i think if i remember correctly was there a clash of thunder as well yeah uh, so yeah. yeah i have mixed feelings on the sound effects some of them i thought were really good some of them fell a bit flat for me so like there were it, it, there's not a lot of sound effects in this yes they're sort She's of a very little sparing, bit yeah. yeah agreed agreed but so for example there was like explosion sound effects right but to me that was really quite quiet and sounded more like an airplane going overhead than a massive catastrophic explosion and i mean obviously you don't want to do a huge loud explosion that you know breaks the eardrums of the <laughs> of the listeners but it didn't work for me those noises and i think if if there had been more sound effects throughout i feel like those would have slotted in better you know but instead they came out of nowhere and yeah. yet didn't seem to fulfill the purpose so it, that that didn't quite hit with me but then there were some other sound effects that uh, i thought were really good and it's nice when there are some in there to add yeah. a bit of extra interest and excitement and stuff i wonder what the editorial like decision behind so maybe in the other previous audiobooks in this series, there are a lot more incidents where they can use sound effects like that. And maybe in maybe. this particular, maybe that's, you know, there, there were mm-hmm. less occasions for, yeah. for, for for them to use. Yeah, there certainly weren't points where I felt, oh, where was the sound effect? You know, um, it, it, it was less so much that. It was more just that feeling of when those ones came up, they took me by surprise, but didn't meet it. And therefore I thought if I was expecting them, you know, and I was expecting subtle sound effect. It, 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 I don't know. That was just an idea of what might have made those work better for me personally. But this is something where I really am in awe of the people that do the sound effects and stuff like this. So when it comes to like the editing stuff I was criticizing before, I'm obviously not a, a professional or an expert, but from, you know, a year of doing this podcast and teaching myself how to cut and things, cutting wise, I you know i have some skills um you know i'm gonna be honest i think i have developed some skills that i'm quite proud of um whereas it comes to how you would add sound effects in how you would make the decision as to what to add in how you would find the right thing how you would make that all work i have no clue at all you know so uh, this is very much criticizing from a position of i don't know how you do it better um yeah and i'm in awe of you that what was done was done but as a listener 
this wasn't my favorite example of them being used um, or at least not every single sound effect was my favorite example of them being used you know yeah um it was just really curious that it was used so sparingly and i'm mm. just trying to think does that kind of like make them when they do occur more special or do you need to kind of make maybe make the decision or we need to kind of use them throughout yeah. a little bit more often like the style so it's just across that, that, yeah, the whole yeah. book yeah yeah just similar to that is the fact that how the music is used um in this as well yes, again i have yeah. again yeah. i have pros and cons on this so the um music at the start i wasn't a huge fan of but that is more just personal taste i for me it didn't suit the tone of the book it just yeah it didn't quite hit home right for me but then again the music that was used during the songs at the end i really liked there was one especially i think i wrote down here that i really enjoyed the backing music yeah so what was called the wizards of once song the backing music on that was really cool and just a fact of it's great for the audiobook and I'm sure we'll be talking about this when we talk about the Lord of the Rings ones next time. Oh, cool. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. But but the fact that you get to have tune and melody and, you know, potentially backing music like there was here for the songs is something that's really exciting about the audiobook versus, you know, print or ebook. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, so when I'm reading a book and there's, like, verses in there, that always mm-hmm. kind of, like, makes me cringe a little bit. I, to be honest with you, I just skip past those bits. If there's, like, mm-hmm. a poem or a uh, song verse, I'll just, like, all right, I'm not reading that. Right. get back to the plot but yeah having that uh, musical accompaniment to mm-hmm. you know, David singing I think worked quite well yeah I've got to say I felt like it got to a point where I felt like there were a few too many songs in a row um, yes. yeah. uh, personally I felt if they'd have been more interspersed throughout I think again with knowing Lord of the Rings ones and how they're more spaced for me I did go oh my god another one yeah. <laughs> um, but then I enjoyed it so it was okay yeah. um, and that is obviously more of the writing than the audio and I think again yeah if you're reading it maybe it doesn't quite have that same oh here there's another song or maybe if with your experience there of thinking oh god here's one then maybe you'd think the same so yeah, yeah. but also yeah. I understand why all the songs were where they were, yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, it was the whole thing that everyone was singing and uh, and lots of songs and celebrating. So, yes, I thought they were good, but I did think, okay, another one. <laughs> but it was good. But yeah. then another, yeah. So, um, so we haven't really talked a lot about the story itself. It's um, it's a, mm-hmm. an adventure story, a coming-of-age story. You know, Zar and Wish are both flawed characters in their own mm-hmm. way. Kind of Zar is kind of like... Uh, I don't know, arrogant, but he's a very kind of sort of... Yeah, I think um, arrogance fair. Yeah, arrogant, <laughs> arrogant young lad who maybe has ideas above his station and wishes. How would you categorise, how would you describe her? Because you know, obviously there's a, a steel underneath there, but there seems to be kind of like a, a big element of self-doubt in some of mm-hmm. her actions as well. Yeah, there's this thing of like, so Wish being the daughter of a warrior queen, you know, and yet not really wanting war, you know, yeah. wanting peace and happiness and friendship um, and sort of the suggestion that that's maybe a weakness in some ways. Um, and I really liked in the book how it talks very honestly about how there's both strength and weakness in that, you know, it's not a kind of, you know, fable of you should be confident or you should be kind, or if you're too kind, you're too weak. Or there's, there's no straightforward message. It really accurately talks about how it's complex. You know, you need a little bit of both. You need a little bit of love. You need a little bit of uh, willing to stick up for yourself and willing to fight for it. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it was. I thought that was a really nice uh, kind of overall thesis on yeah Yeah. what's important and a lovely again you know taking into consideration the fact that this is a kid's book you know it's a very mature and helpful thing of you know be emotionally you know emotionally healthy uh, and that kind of thing a a good share of all um traits you know rather than you know you have to be big strong macho or you should only be soft and caring and kind to everyone yeah. and get pushed over yeah. you know it, it did a really good um look at that balance through these two characters and their journey which yeah. i thought was really nice yeah because they each got qualities the other kind of a lax mm-hmm. a little in a bit, sort of um wizard of oz kind of um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> needs a heart needs a needs a brain <laughs> needs, needs some brain. courage kind um, of thing yeah kind of the other interesting theme i felt that was running through this particular book and we're not able to speak to what happens in the other book is kind of a challenging of traditions and finding new yeah. ways to mm-hmm. live not just with your family um and the people in your own community but you're know, finding new ways to live with people in differing 
communities as well, mm. kind of trying to, you know, realizing that, you know, forging a future after war is not always like the easiest yeah. thing to do, but like it's ultimately the only thing that you can do mm. as well. So um, I thought that was kind of quite a deep message. Um, yeah, I can as well. agree with you there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did you feel about Cressida's use of language? Because I do appreciate this is like a children's book, but I felt like there were some points that she might have been a little bit more ambitious with some of the words that she might have chosen to kind of like narrate it. I think, again, my opinion is a bit like I said before, I think it's easy to underestimate yeah. what kids, you know, can handle um, and stuff like that. I didn't particularly flag that there was anything um, kind of vocabulary choice wise that I, you know, nothing stood out to me yeah. in that kind of way. Um, and I think it's good for there to be words in there that, you know, kids might not know. Yeah. Because it has that thing of, you know, maybe they'll ask an adult what it means or maybe they'll be able to figure out from context and they'll learn a new word through that. Yeah. And I think it is very important that kids' books aren't dumbed down. Yeah. You know, I mean, obviously be aware of, you know, the style of writing that you use and what they're likely to know and not know. You know, definitely be aware of your audience. Um, but yeah, definitely not dumbing it down either, yeah. I don't think. So, yeah, so I mean... <sighs> At risk of repeating myself i i really enjoyed this book i wish i had the greater context of like the larger the story to to fully mm-hmm. enjoy it i think this series is i think probably one i'll be recommending to like the young readers in my life nice, i think it's yeah. kind of like i think it's, it's it seems like great fun and yeah like Cressida, i think writes like wonderfully well, the way she gets her characters bickering with each mm. other i think is like quite a lot of fun and she's got a really great way of capturing these like complex family dynamics between yeah. like children that want to go in a certain direction and parents who have got a certain uh view of the world and how things should be done to like, kind of uphold the honor of the house and that sort of stuff i really enjoy the way she captures that um then i mean she writes fantastic like action sequences as well kind of like the mm-hmm. ending action sequence to this was like that wow it was, it was like so engaging um mm. and Again, there was a few sound effects, but yeah, David did a beautiful job of like bringing those action sequences mm-hmm. uh, to life as well. Yeah, no, I, th- I think I agree with you there. And I think I probably will um, listen to this again and, you know, start from the beginning of the series and listen through. I think it's maybe one where if I want something comforting to listen to going to sleep but that's new enough um to hold my interest yes and that's something that I love doing as a kid I would listen to audiobooks going to sleep so yeah I think this is the kind of thing that I'd like to listen again and would be nice for that sort of comforting thing there and like you say would recommend to other people uh I think we possibly had the um How to Train Your Dragon audiobooks when I was younger yeah but I actually had like quite a lull in audiobooks at that sort of age of story like bracket um you know i had a lot of much younger titles in audio and then you know moved on to adult ones afterwards and i didn't have a load there and i'm you know i'm not sure exactly why that was um but i like that there's more coming up you know as audio is increasing as there's more and more audio books there are more and more audio books in that you know, in that age range, you know, I ended up, I read quite a lot of books in that age range. I didn't listen to as many books in that age range. So it's really nice that they are definitely out there and yeah, growing as the whole audiobook industry grows as well, which is really good. It like, it makes me excited that there's going to be, you know, generations of kids that are going to listen to so much more, you know, and in that age point going to listen to so much more and discovering new ones and you know maybe not even more passion than us uh because we're pretty passionate but you know loving it like we do and you know and it's really quite exciting thinking of like people that are gonna join the audiobook industry having listened to books like these throughout their childhood um and the kind of exciting things that they're gonna do you know their own opinions like we've had on what the music was like what the sound effects were like what the narration was like um what the writing was like and that they're gonna bring all that to making even better ones in the future which yeah i think is really good and i also wanted to say like this is a good one because they are really quite long and there's four of them yes so it's really nice because it's something that kids can get really invested in 
you know and, and whether it's because you've got a long car journey with kids maybe um and you can put one on you're not gonna have to you know stop after an hour and be like oh man what do we do now yeah <laughs> you know they're gonna keep you going for a while and also you know if you've got really um voracious listeners that you know kids that love fiction love stories and want more 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 you know there's a good amount of audio here to keep them going and we can certainly say that it finishes off well um and we're going to assume that the first three books are um are pretty good too so yeah a strong recommendation from me too i think even with some slight criticisms <laughs> so it's a strong recommendation for me to it's the only children's title on the list so I've, that's gonna be interesting how the judges will view it because of that but yeah um I just want to say kind of one last thing. We, we talked a little bit about the ending. Uh, we don't want to give any too, too many spoilers no, no. away, but it's just kind of like, you think it's telling one story, but uh, at the end you realize, oh, it's it a good really twist. meta. And it's telling like, yeah, oh, yeah. It, does. So, it goes yeah. so meta. Yeah. And I really loved this discussion in there about why stories are important, uh, which I thought was, yeah, really yeah. good. And good, quite intellectual, you know, yeah. but in a way that, you know, not inaccessible for kids, like we've just been talking about, accessible, but also in a way where as um, as a kid, I think you're being told why stories are so important and you can identify with that having just listened to a great story. Yeah. And like as an adult, and certainly for me as an adult that works in publishing and loves stories so much, could really connect with it in, an, in yeah. another way as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, that's two firm recommendations from us. So we hope you enjoyed that special bonus episode, everyone. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, you can contact us by email at audiobookishpod at gmail.com or you can reach us through our social media, which is at audiobookishpod on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Uh, we would really, really deeply appreciate it if you left a review for the podcast or a rating on whichever app you're listening to us on. And if you could support us by also clicking in the tip jar link that's included in the episode description, we'll be back in a couple of weeks time with a new episode. Uh, in the meantime, guys, take care. Thanks. Bye.